Hi, uh, my name is Dagur Eggerson. Uh, I'm the mayor of Reykjavik. Actually, born in Oslo and speak Swedish, so I'm maybe the perfect thing for this uh, lunch break here in the Nordic Pavilion. I wanted to tell you briefly about Reykjavik position on climate change and the Reykjavik Green Deal. Uh, to do that, uh, I just want to start with underlining that uh, Reykjavik is, and the Reykjavik area is the lion's share of the population of Iceland. Uh, it's a big country with few inhabitants, but most of us live in or close to Reykjavik. A hundred years ago, Reykjavik was quite a small town, but with significantly more pollution than now. What we see in this photo from 1933, and that's nothing to laugh about, uh, is smog. It's actually from coal uh, and wood burning within every other kitchen. Uh, what happened was that Reykjavik used the the part of its name, Reykur means smoke, uh, not coal smoke, but uh, smoke from the warm uh, water underneath uh, the city. Uh, first, only to uh, wash clothes, but uh, later to build out central heating to every company and every home in the city. Actually, that was not fulfilled until the oil crisis of the 70s. Uh, that generation took a leap. You can call it leap of faith, but you need to borrow money to do long-term investments when it comes to the climate. And after that, 100% of all homes and companies in Reykjavik are hooked up to geothermal energy for heating. But a byproduct of that is electricity. And that is 100% uh, renewable. Here you can see how Iceland uh, went uh, to use of geothermal energy for electricity production and heating. Uh, and what you see is that hydro is the second largest uh, energy source, but uh, coal has been little, oil is still there, and we want to phase that out. We are one of the few countries in the world that are 100% green when it comes to electricity production, and we build on that when we look at the numbers for Reykjavik when it comes to uh, the climate, we are scoring the highest among cities in the world in a green way, but we can't uh, kind of boost for that, our generation, because most of that is because the generation that hooked us up to central heating and made uh, electricity production green. This is not to understand, it's just to uh, take in that what has happened since Paris is that cities have become much better in uh, measuring their carbon footprints and that can be uh, set forward in a simple way what happens within the city boundaries or with the different kind of chains of production of the things used within the city and cities are getting better and better at uh, publishing in a coherent way these numbers and new numbers are out next week internationally over thousand cities uh, will then be published Reykjavik is among them we have had an action plan uh, uh, for Reykjavik since uh, just after the Paris summit. We had it kind of in script before, but wanted to kind of galvanize it. Uh, but we have had uh, uh, a climate action plan for more than 10 years in general terms. And what we are dealing with is basically waste management, this is from our new plant where we are capturing most of the methane and we have quite bold action plan of stopping to uh, put waste in landfills. That is 
probably one of the boldest that I know of, and we have to see if we uh, can make it in time. But what we are dealing with is that Reykjavik was planned in the 60s as the, as the car perfect city, among with a lot of cities in the world, and uh, uh, that is a huge task, both to go from uh, oil and gas to electricity and green energy when it comes to driving, but also in changing uh, travel behavior. I know as a, a medical doctor, that's my background, uh, is one of the hardest things you change in anyone's life is how they behave. So that's a big task and we have to have green solutions uh, both there and uh, good and inviting. And actually, we have to change the way we move around the city to fulfill the Paris uh, Agreement. So we are setting out quite bold modal split goals. We want to uh, decrease uh, how much we drive in private cars and want to boost public transport and uh, walking and biking. Uh, we have entered into agreement with other municipalities in the Reykjavik area and the government to introduce a BRT uh, system in, in the coming years. So we think that we have ensured the um, investment necessary to meet those goals, but it won't be easy and we have to get everyone with us. This is uh, a picture of the transportation problem in Reykjavik. People uh, live in the outskirts and drive to the center where most of the biggest working places are. Uh, so they drive in in the morning and drive back in the evenings and that is what we need to change and we, we won't do that by just going from gas to electricity and not even by boosting uh, public transport. We also have to change planning. We have to uh, make more dwellings close to the biggest uh, workplaces and have to have more workplaces in the outskirts where many people live. And that is exactly what we are doing. We are densifying the city, and making it more interesting at the same time. One of the interesting examples of what we are doing is also uh, making gas stations disappear. How do we do that? With uh, agreements with uh, oil selling companies. So we have entered into agreement with three of the biggest. So this is actually the uh, gas stations as they are now, but within five years, they will uh, half in numbers. Uh, and we do that by uh, giving them building permits for residencies and services instead. But uh, I noticed that one of the things that is not very much talked about during COP is one of the oldest and simplest way to change cities, which is biking. Making just great biking inf infrastructure and great infrastructure for walking is uh, what has been boosting biking from being almost non-existent when it comes to transport to your workplace in 2000 to being 7% in all trips made within the city just uh, now. And we want to be a world-class bike city and we have uh, made place for investments and goals for that. Only 15 years ago it was forbidden to uh, take your bike to that school because it was so dangerous because of all the parents that were driving their kids to school. But now this is the daily uh, usage of bikes in Lørenskoli. And we have a plan for that, as for everything, but our big plan for the next 10 years is Reykjavik uh, Green Deal, where we are boosting investment, both as a response to the COVID crisis and the economic outfall of that, but we are also investing heavily in everything green and doing that uh, earlier. Uh, we, apart from the things I mentioned, we are doing things 
uh, in carbon capture, restoration of wetlands among them. We are uh, certifying our forests uh, so uh, companies and families can be carbon neutral by planting trees or paying Reykjavik uh, Forest Association for planting. But not, uh, last but not least, we are capturing gas and changing it into stone. It sounds like a fairy tale, but it's not more of a fairy tale than our uh, past generations uh, did when they used the warm water under the feet to make Reykjavik green, we actually see that we can pump gas down and change it into stone. And uh, Carbfix is doing that in connection with our geothermal energy plans. It's a world leading technique that we want to see scaled up in the next year and that can have positive consequences all around the world because we know that more places have basalt layers as we have and is needed for that technique uh, and we use in Iceland. So that is one of the kind of thrilling things coming out of Reykjavik and it's a part of Reykjavik Energy, our energy company. But we also uh, have worked with the businesses and companies of Iceland. This is how worried they were uh, before the Paris summit five years ago. But then we entered into an agreement that everyone would set out uh, a climate target and start publishing on the results. And now we want them to uh, be with us in, in taking this further. And we want to see as many Icelandic businesses carbon neutral within five and 10 years as possible. When it comes to the public, uh, I was inspired by none less than Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he has uh, time and again pointed out that there is a very close connection to what we need to do when it comes to climate change and what is smart to do for individuals' health and the health of cities. Pollution, physical activity, etc. you get the drill, if you go through all of these investments and initiatives we are taking, most of them are also good for public health and that is why we are stressing public health. So a climate action plan and a public health plan is a part of the Reykjavik Green Deal and we are basing this on research that show that there's a strong correlation between uh, how you plan a city, how uh, mixed use it is, and how likely it is that you uh, exercise and are active physically, that the amount of services that are close to home is in a direct correlation to how likely you are to go out for a stroll or, or bike, etc. There is actually a, a linear uh, correlation between uh, how mixed use and dense cities are and how likely you are to be obese. And that is, of course, connected to time spent in cars. So, to me, uh, the Reykjavik climate strategy uh, goes to the heart of how we want to develop the city and how we want people to live, uh, have quality of life, have good health, and be cheerful. So this is not a fight uh, for something that is uh, extremely hard and bad for a city. This is actually a fight for a, a better, more interesting, uh, and more healthy city which we should all support, of course. So in an Icelandic uh, style, I want to say thank you.